Hey guys, Drew Cook here with Bass Resource, and uh, I want to talk to you about how I tackle fishing uh, in the winter time. You know, this is a time that's um, really overlooked by a lot of people. You know, a lot of people are in the woods. I'm guilty of it myself. But uh, you know, every every year, say you kill that buck, you know, right off the get go, and you know you're tagged out, stuff like that. It's when you can go out on the lake and not have to deal with as many boats. A lot of people aren't on the water and the, you know the fish are really healthy you catch a lot of really big fish whenever it's cold uh, and in the winter time and you can find them you know deep you can find them shallow it's really fun and it gives you um, the opportunity to fish before you need to fish so like in the springtime whenever you have all your tournaments you know you don't want to be just remembering how to throw a bait caster and things like that you know this gets you into fishing shape and, and gets you more prepared for the rest of the season so in, in the winter, I, I, uh, I start off with the same thing I do every season. Everything revolves around where they spawn. Where bass spawn, you can always figure out where they are as long as you can figure out where they spawn. So they're gonna be out from where they spawn. And as winter goes on, so you, from early winter, they're, you know, they're still far back in, in the creeks and half of them are, are deep just chasing bait um, to late winter they're going to gradually get you know get closer you know to where they're going to spend where, where they're going to spawn and where they're going to be in the spring so whenever you find where they spawn you can i know it's like beating a dead horse but that is probably i think one of the most important things uh in any any time find where they spawn you can work forwards or backwards from that so in the winter, you know, it's going to be cold. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that will deter you uh, from fishing. So you want to be warm, you know, just you personally be warm, you know, pack a lot of gloves, things like that. Whenever they get wet, just take them off, put a new pair on. That's going to keep you out there longer uh, and let you, you know, fish more. But you're going you're gonna to be fishing, you know, you can do a couple different things. You can throw a big jig, you know, deep, and you know when you get that bite, it's just dong, get to set the hook and stuff like that. Or you can fish up shallow. There's going to be a lot of fish up shallow where you're throwing a a, uh, a crankbait or a um, you know a lipless, you know things like that around rock. Uh, you can get out there and you know over a hundred foot of water if you have it, and and catch fish that are spending the winter suspended on bait. You know, Demiki rigging, or, or you know, throwing a, a anything like that. You know, really finesse style. It, you can do whatever. You know, either crack them on 20 pound line with a big jig, or catch them on six pound line on a spinning rod. But a lot of those ones that that suspend, it's all bait oriented, and you can't hold them accountable for anything. They can be here today, gone tomorrow. Uh, they're gonna go wherever that bait goes. So. It's really hard to fish a tournament uh, whenever you have that because more than likely whenever you pull up somewhere, they're not going to be there. And then you're going to spend a lot of your day uh, looking for them. But the, the shallow, like I love cranking shallow rock and wood and stuff like that. That's my favorite way to fish in the winter. Uh, that and, and flipping wood and rock, you know, anything that warms up. Boat docks are really huge in the winter, um, especially the floating boat docks. The, the black pontoon or whatever floats that are on them, those things hold heat. And uh, when they hold heat, the fish, you know, really gravitate to them. And, and that's a fun way to, to catch them, you know, throwing a, a swim bait or something that you can skip underneath there. If you have to, you know, a wacky rig and things like that. But those docks, the, that hold heat is, is what, what the deal is. And you'll find that there'll be a pattern inside a pattern, if that makes sense. So there'll be, you know, say in the last third of a, of a ditch or a creek or whatever, and there are, that's the docks that they're on. But as you do it, you know, for a couple of days, you find that they're in the last third on the docks that have jet ski platforms on the side uh, and it doesn't sound like a, a difference but you know it is different it's just like there being a big grass flat and then there's one patch of pads in it 
you know, like that's different and difference is what, what bass really key in on. And as an angler, that's what you should key on, key in on as well. Um, and the holding the heat thing is the same as you, you know, move to a grass lake, flipping a lot of times that year, just in the thickest, nastiest stuff that you can find grass that's getting beat on by the sun and holding that heat in, you know, it can be, the water temp can be 58 degrees or 50 degrees, whatever. And then underneath that mat, it can be three or four or five degrees warmer. Um, and I know us, you know, whenever you, you, whenever you get into your, your house or whatever, whenever it's cold outside, whether you think about it or not, you know, you you get as close, you get close to that, that air vent that's blowing that heat out or the fireplace or something like that. Um, and you don't really even recognize it. You know, you don't walk in and there's a fireplace across the, across the room when you're cold and not walk over there and put your hands behind your back and, and do like this to get warm. That's the same thing these fish are doing. They can't stand it. You know, when they're say they're swimming along and then they feel a little warmth, they're going to get over there by that thing and, and, and get up close to it. And, uh, and, and soak in that, that warmth. Another thing about the winter is uh, the metabolism of a bass, you know, slows down then, and metabolism of everything really when it's cold. Um, but it's not like a bear hibernating, like they're still gonna eat, they got to. And they, they just fed up so much in the fall, you know, they, they've got enough to when their, their body slows down, they can kind of make it through. But a lot of times whenever you catch them in the winter, uh, even shallow cranking or, or something like that, uh, you know, they're big. They've got little mouths and fat and, you know, some of the biggest fish you catch all year are, are in the winter time. Um, uh, clear water spotted bass lakes, you know, like a, a Hartwell or a Lanier or whatever. It seems like the, the winter time is really good there, but those, the spots and stuff like that, they don't act like it's, it's really winter. There's a lot of schooling that goes on. Um, it's more, bait driven they're like a pack of piranhas uh, whenever that bait gets out there they, they just can't stand it and you'd think with it being so cold the fish aren't going to be as active not schooling but on those herring lakes it it seems like that the water temp really doesn't matter and i mean whenever you're fishing in the winter time on a grass lake you know it's going to be flipping but don't don't count out uh, a buzz bait um, some of the biggest bags I've ever caught in the winter time have been, you know, on a buzz bait. I didn't get but five bites, but they were all great big ones. And I'm talking about, you know, in the south where I'm where I live, uh 56, 56, 57 degree and less water temperature. Uh whenever it, it doesn't ever get down there, but I'd say 45 to 60, you can throw a top water in. You're not going to get that many bites, but there's something about that that top water that you know really gets a a big fish. Um, I've had it where you're throwing a, a lipless and your your bait gets fouled up and it runs sideways on the surface. You know it's got a grass on it or something like that, and I've had them absolutely clobber it. Like, oh well, you know, and then you pick up a buzz bait or a waffle flopper or something, and throw it, and you know catch some of the biggest fish of the day. You're not getting many bites, but you know, still catching big ones. So that's something to, to keep into play. Um, and you know, in the winter time in the South where I'm from, you never, never, uh, never count out the, the uh, influence of a, of a spring. And this is from, I would say the Mason Dixon line down you know, uh, a spring that has, you know, there's going to be warmer water then and a lot of fish are going to, going to congregate around it where, you know, like at, at a Gunnersville spring, you know, there's, you're going to catch them on lipless and a chatterbait around it. Uh, and you know, all the way down into Florida, you know, it can be December just freezing cold and you catch them off bed, you know, in the spring because they don't know any better. Um, you know, the water temperature is right. It's the same thing that they look for all, all around the lake, but it's only in one place and you're going to have those resident fish that are, that are going to spawn in there. So don't, don't 
don't not go shallow just because it's cold and don't not throw a top water just because it's cold you know you kind of gotta gotta keep it all another tip that um that i do a lot in the in the winter whenever i mean it's like really really cold um i actually throw some mono uh that's the only time besides throwing a small top water like popping style bait that i ever throw throw mono i'll throw mono on a spinner bait and i'll throw mono on a on a crankbait um, and what that mono does is uh, the ice, you know, if, if your reels are icing and like your rod tips and stuff like that are, are icing, that, that mono is, is better at not getting little microscopic cuts in it to actually weaken your line. And it gives those fish extra time whenever, that, whenever they bite it. Um, you know, throwing, throwing a spinnerbait on mono is something I've done and in the wintertime something I've done for for a really long time uh, and it just seems like they need just a little bit longer you know I'm already throwing it on a glass rod and things like that but they just need just a little bit longer to be able to get get that that spinnerbait and that you know crankbait in their in their mouth good uh, another thing to think about here this is this is a way big rabbit hole um, but uh their mouths are so hard uh, in the winter from the the cold and I don't know if it's eating crawfish or whatever, but their mouths are harder in, in the winter time than they are in the, the summertime. So I use more round bin hooks um, on crankbaits, things like that, over EWG style hooks. Uh, I, I do still use, you know, some EWG-ish style hooks like the Gamagatsu G Finesse uh, on a lipless in the winter, but on my crankbaits, I like to use round bends, you know, bronze hook or G Finesse hook, and that helps with your, your landing uh, and your hooking ratio. You want something really small to, to get through there because that mouth's so hard. Um, and that's just another little tidbit for you. Another thing is whenever it does get cold, um, you know, if, if you can, some of that line care stuff um, to spray on your reels really helps your line from not freezing in the actual spool. Like, you know, the eyes will still freeze, but not in the spool. And, you know, chapstick helps your, your guides. Um, you see a lot of people that'll dip, dip their rods in the water. Um, you're only solving that problem momentarily and by the time you get your cast in you know they're going to be frozen again if before you you know get to fishing you probably have to do it a couple times a day take chapstick and put it on your on your eyes it'll really help with that freezing um you know kind of globbing up on, on the eye so we don't have to deal with that a lot down where i live but uh you know a lot of people that are watching this do so that's just a little tip but that's what i do Whenever it comes to wintertime fishing, I appreciate y'all for watching.